Hello and welcome to another SY Diagnostics video and today we've got a 2020 Ford Fiesta mild hybrid with a charging problem. So let's get this diagnosed and fixed using the manufacturer's process. But before we go any further, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for notifications of my latest video, uh, like, comment and share. After all, a subscription, unlike Peugeot, isn't a dirty word. So as you can see, the engine's currently running. I've got a charging system at ServiceNow warning on the dashboard. Um, got a few consumers on. Can't get the front windscreen button to work. Heater works, all the lights work. Obviously all the high current consumers aren't working. So let's see what fault codes we've got. Let's look at a little bit of live data. This is a new system to me, the 48 volt hybrid system. So I'm gonna be learning on the job with this one. So let's go have a look. Okay, so as always, I'm gonna use Forescan for its ease. It's a lot quicker than using the genuine dealer tool for getting some fault codes. As you can see straight away, we've already got some fault codes in the integrated starter generator module. And we've also got one fault code there in the PCM, which is the engine control module. So let's see what they are. In the engine control module, we have POA1E, starter generator control module, but there's no fault code description. And in the integrated starter generator, we've got generator control module circuit intermittent, P0A1A, and P0A1A again with some different um, after figures. Again, generator control module with no description. P0A7A, generator inverter performance, component internal failure. Next fault code is P0E10, uh, inverter power supply A circuit low. So we're building the picture up now what a potential issue could be. And finally, we've got U3001, control module and proper shutdown performance. We've also got a fault code in the body control module, which is transmitter ID code. Not too concerned with that for the moment. And likewise with the fault code in the driver's door module, rear door switch illumination. Nothing to do with the fault we've got. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump now onto the dealer tool and run symptom-based diagnostics. After all, the, the manufacturer is paying the bill for this because the vehicle is still under warranty. So we do have to work by their standards. So I've run a, a system test and it's come up with these tests based on the fault codes that it's detected and the symptoms that I've inputted. And we're going to do the first test now where it's going to test the starter generator and the start well the starter generator module and the mild hybrid control module and the DC DC converter. It's also asking us if the 12 volt battery state of charge is low, and I've got to exit this test, I charge that up, and then continue when it's got a uh, sufficient state of charge. So initially, this test will read and display various hybrid system parameters uh, whilst the ignition on it, the ignition is on and off. If they're all in the normal range. I'm going to be asked to start the engine and proceed to system power-up check. If the power-up is successful, the test will read and display various mild hybrid system parameters whilst the engine is running. If all the parameters are within the normal range, the test will proceed to the mild hybrid battery charging and discharging checks. If the mild hybrid state of charge, SOC, is below the normal operating level, then additional checking of the charging system will be performed. So let's continue now. Just telling me to put the ignition on with the engine off, which we do. Running through its test procedures now. Um, it's just reading the 12 volt battery state of uh, voltage, which was 12.8, so that's all good. We're in the green. Now we're going to just go and read the fault codes. It's going to retrieve the fault codes that it's stored. It's just come back with the one fault code, and none of them have been uh, erased. It's now going to ask us to clear the fault codes, which we do. Turn the ignition off. I'm going to wait two minutes now for the power down, which is obviously I've edited that for you guys. Turn the ignition on.
It's now going to read the mild hybrid contactor status of the BECM. When the engine is off, the contactor should be open. So we're going to make sure the engine is off before continuing, which we do. It's saying it's open as expected, so that's good, we can continue. It's now going to read the DC-DC converter status from the module. During normal operation, the status should set to enabled. So it is, en it is set to enabled, so that's good. Continue. Looking for the input voltage, it should be less than two, uh, 15 volts, which it is, with the ignition off. The supply voltage of the DC-DC converter is all good there at 12.5 volts. And the switched ignition voltage also 12.7 volts, so that's all good as well in the green. High, mild hybrid state of charge is 28.7, it's a little bit low but it's still in the green. Mild hybrid battery voltage is 43.1 volts, so that's good. The BECM ECU supply voltage is 12.7, so that's also good. Control module voltage is tested again at 12.7, so that's good as well. The mild hybrid battery voltage is 12. Uh, sorry, 2.5 volts with the engine off and the contactor open. So as long as it's less than 15 volts, that's good. And the starter generator module ECU supply voltage is 12.69 volts. That's good as well, we're in the green. Starter generator motor voltage is zero because the engine is off, so the contactor is open. So that is good as well. The following step will check the starter generator is in the correct mode when the ignition is on and the engine is off. Come back saying the generator is in the correct mode so we can continue now so in order for the mild hybrid system to power up correctly the system must be complete uh, must complete the following interactions the driver presses the ignition button the engine is started and enters the idle state the pcm then requests that the dc dc converter charges up the mild hybrid system the DC-DC converter draws power from the 12 volt battery to pre-charge the 48 volt system. Once pre-charged, the mild hybrid battery contactor closes. Once closed, the PCM requests that the DC-DC converter starts converting 48 volts to 12 volts to, su to support the 12 volt battery. By monitoring the DC-DC converter, 48 volt side voltage and the mild hybrid battery contactor status the next step will determine whether the system is powering up correctly. So let's continue. Now this is where I come into an error because I think personally there's a fault on the program, there's a typo, but you will see this in a second because I start the engine up and it still says that the contactor is open, which is a little bit disconcerting because um, you don't know whether we've got a fault on the system or a fault in the program. So currently engine off, ignition on, the hybrid contactor status is open and the voltage is 2 volts, so that's all good. And then it's asking me now to run the engine, which I do, but it's still saying it's open and it's still saying it's 2 volts. So a little bit disconcerting that is, as to whether it's a genuine typo or there's a fault on the vehicle. So we continue with the test plan and it does actually say that it powered up and it was successful that it's pre-charging the hybrid system and the contactor is closed. So that's a little bit disconcerting, I think. I'm not too pleased with that. The rest of the system now is showing that the voltages are all um, exactly how they should be. All the desired and actual voltages are all within specifications. The next test we're going to do, it will monitor the rapid charging of the mild hybrid battery whilst the state of charge is low. If the hybrid system is operating correctly, then the battery state of charge should reach the target value, which in this case is 37%. Uh, and if any of the displayed parameters are not within the operating range, the test will abort and will display the fault condition. So let's continue. It's telling us in a second that everything's closed and okay. 
we've got an incorrect mode and a fault straight away. So it's before even running the engine again, it's, it's flagged up the fault code. So now we're going to go to the next test, which is the starter generator check. This next test is going to test for internal failures of the starter generator module, the SGM. Check for loose electrical connections, contacted, uh, sorry, contaminated electrical connectors, faulty starter generator wiring, or any communication issues with the battery energy control module, BC, BECM, or the Beckham as Ford call it. If an internal fault is present, the procedure will attempt to reset and recover the SGM. Prior to continuous test, make sure the 12 volt battery condition has been performed and the 12 volt battery is correct state of charge. If the battery state of charge is low, I've got to exit the test and obviously charge the battery up. So what we'll do now, we'll just quickly jump onto Forescan and check the 12 volt battery state of charge which you can see is 63%. So although it's lower than the specified figure, it's not low enough to cause any problems for this test. So let's continue. So in order to heal a possible SGM fault, it requires a successful shutdown of the mild hybrid system. The following steps must be carried out in the exact order. I've got to crank and start the engine, wait for three seconds and then turn the engine off. The three second pause is to allow the mild hybrid battery contactor to close in order to start the mild hybrid system. If the mild hybrid battery state of charge is too low, the contactor may reopen within a few seconds of the mild hybrid system starting. So let's continue. Again, ignition on, engine off. So once I press continue, I crank and start the engine, let it idle for three seconds, and then switch the engine off, which I've currently done, or in the process of doing, should I say. And the shutdown was all complete. So again, put the ignition back on. Close the driver's door, making sure I put the leads through the window so as not to trap the cables. Now I'm gonna read any fault codes in the starter generator module and as you can see there, we've got six fault codes, which we showed you previously. Uh, now it need, requires a drive cycle in order to monitor any internal faults at the starter generator module. So we're going to get prepared now for a road test. If the fault is detected during the drive cycle, the bar graph will terminate the process and, and proceed to the next step. Uh, likewise, if the engine stalls, it will continue to the next step. If no fault is present, the bar graph will terminate after approximately six minutes of driving. Don't worry guys, you're not going to be here for the next six minutes watching a white screen. So, ignition on with the engine running this time. I'm going to get ready now for a road test. So I'm basically now driving out the show, uh, out the workshop. And I don't think I even get out of the uh, premises and the starter generator fault has been detected. So now turn the ignition off and it's going to take us now into some wiring tests. So I've got to just check the connections now on number one connector, which is underneath the starter generator module. So let's go have a look at that. For those of you who have not seen this system before, um, the 48 volt starter generator is just here tucked underneath the inlet manifold. This takes the place of the alternator and the starter motor, but it also does, which is just at the end of my finger there, admittedly it's a little bit dark, you probably can't see it. This particular engine does have a normal conventional starter motor for cold starting situations. So this. Okay, so we're underneath the engine now. I've got the camera stuffed right up in the front between the intercooler and the uh, aircon compressor starter generator is this little critter here the connector it's asking us to check is this one with a little red tab on it um, I have checked it off camera it is nice and tight so with that confirmed let's move on forward okay on the same connector it's asking me now to check for bent damaged contaminated or loose pins 
Okay, so I've got the connector off. Uh, excuse my voice, I'm just stretching there. Um, I don't think the camera is going to focus in on that very well. But there's no water ingress, no signs of corrosion. I'm just going to go get a camera, a mirror, and check the pins where my index finger is pointing. That's on the starter generator itself. Uh, make sure they're all not bent. Pop it back on and see where else it takes us. I think we know. I know it's nigh on impossible for you guys to see what I can see, but in the mirror, all the six pins look perfectly okay on the starter generator. Um, so let's lower the vehicle, press continue and see where we head up next. So what it's shown us now is all the connector points on the system, each with its own specific torque value. And I've got to inspect every above mentioned connector for signs of contamination, damage or arcing. And obviously then check the torque figures at each bolt. The 48 volt battery is situated underneath the driver's seat. There's one of its main connectors there. Again, not gonna show you me having to take all the seat out and check all the connections, but that's what I'm gonna do next. This is just showing us the torque figures and the reference points for the 48 volt battery. Again, I've checked everything previously, like I've done with the other 11 bolts. So I'm just showing there that everything's all okay. And the next thing we've got to do now is break out the test lead box, connect that into the um, VCM unit. I'm going to go ahead now and do some continuity testing between the points as referenced. And before we start any testing, what we have to do, we have to calibrate the cables, zero the cables off. So that's passed, so now we're going to go into the first test. Okay, so I'm connected with the positive side of the um, scope leads onto the connector, earth connector of the starter generator. And let me just get my torch. And the other side, I'm connected to the ground point just where my finger is there so let's see what the readings we've got okay so we're showing less than 0.1 of an ohm so that's just doing a volt drop of the earth cable so let's accept it and carry on press continue And now it wants me to go between location number two, which is that connector, and connector C1457A, which is on the DC-DC converter. Okay, so now we're connected to the positive of the starter generator, where my finger's wiggling there. A little bit dark, I'm afraid. I hope you can see that and we're going up to this connector here which has just conveniently fell out okay and then we're connecting to this connector here which is the positive supply to the starter generator from the DC DC converter which is just up near the passenger side wheel in the uh, front wheel arch so let's go see what we've got and as expected, we've got less than 0.05 of an ohm resistance. So that's just measuring the continuity again, like the last test. Let's go forward and let's see what we've got next.
Okay, so now we'll check in from the DC DC converter connector C1457 to the ground on the chassis. So let's get that hooked up. Okay, so now we're connected to the earth point on the front of the DC DC converter where the green wire is and to the chassis ground just where the black lead is on the chassis ground connector. So let's see what we've got now. And as expected, we've got very low resistance, 0.08 of an ohm. So let's accept that. Continue. And now we've got more tests. Anyway, it's dinner time for me now, so I'm gonna resume for dinner, or break for dinner and resume after my dinner. Okay, so I was wishing my life away there. It wasn't dinner time, I'm half an hour early. Um, so I've got some connections now going down the side of the pins so as not to open the pins up and cause any pin grip issues. I'm in connector four and six like it's asking me to. Ignition's on. So let's go back and see what we've got. Okay, as we can see, we've got 12.33 volts. Exactly what it's after. So let's continue, see what we've got next to do. Turn the ignition off, let's see what it's asking us now. And it's telling us now to fit a starter generator control module. Um, so yeah, let's get uh, the part number, let's see what that is, and let's get it ordered.